Hey, hey, hey! I'm lost. Can you help me? I've been trying to read this map. My GPS doesn't work. I lost my compass a while back. I thought maybe if I found, followed the right people, then I'd get here. I, I gave a lot of money to... I, I even tried to help people along the way. I don't even know how I got here. Gave a lot of time, a lot of effort. People told me that this is the path, and any path I chose would lead me to where I wanted to go, but I'm so lost. Can you help me get there? Can you tell me which way to heaven? I don't know if you caught some of those words there. Any path will lead him to where he wants to go. And yet, he still doesn't know how to get to heaven. Our friend in that video really represents so many people in our lives that are utterly lost, not knowing how to get to heaven, how to be saved. Fortunately, God's word consistently shows the way. If you are here this morning and you have the faith of Jesus Christ in your heart, I dare you to say amen. 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 Well, that's good. A lot of you are here. Good. You're here to worship. We are worshiping the King. Uh, I'm going to invite you to open your Bibles to Mark chapter 1 in this series that we're in, the one we follow, as we really kind of take a look at the Gospel of Mark, sort of verse by verse, step by step. Uh, before we read the passage today, I want to give you just a very brief little commentary on the fact that last week we spent the uh, time together kind of looking at John the Baptist, who he was and, and, and what he brought to uh, that moment in time. And between where we were last week in verse 13 and where we start today in verse 14, uh, if you're a part of the men's Bible study on Thursday morning, you'll know that the, the, my, my favorite phrase for that is, there's a lot of white space between those two points in time, because uh, where we get to the place in verse 14, John the Baptist has now been imprisoned. Uh, he has been imprisoned by uh, the Jewish king Herod Antipas, uh, because John was preaching things that Herod didn't like to hear. Uh, John was preaching about the kingdom of God, uh, but also the fact that Herod had taken his brother's wife as his own wife. That lands John in prison. And, and that's some of the background. So there's a, we, we go from, if we're reading this, we go from verse 13 to 14. We're making a jump in time, but that's what we're going to do here together. Read with me, starting in verse 14. Uh, After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. While he had gone a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother, John, in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Now, before we explore the scripture together, uh, I want to address kind of a big problem right now, and that is, have you ever noticed how people really seek out bad news? Go out on Facebook anytime today if you like. There's all sorts of bad news out there that people are commenting on and getting all excited. And this particular pattern is kind of a worldwide issue. It's not a first world problem. But if you were to, you know, take in your favorite uh, news uh, venue, you know, whether it be ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox News, CNN, NPR, BBC, or Facebook, whatever it is where you take in your news, what is it that makes bad news so attractive? Well, according to the National Academy of Sciences, studies in human behavior confirm that negative news triggers very powerful emotional and physical responses within your physiology. People get angry, they get frustrated, their blood pressure increases. When you read bad news or when you see it or when you hear it, all of this negative news, these images, they, they kind of bring out the fight in people. And we get emotionally involved and we have to this cause that we can now rally behind. and Man, the triggers in our brain just whip people into a frenzy, uh, craving more and more negative news. And when I think about that, one of the things that comes to, to mind is the fact that it's like a marker of humanity. 
our thirst for the knowledge of evil never seems to go away. Brings us right back to the Garden of Eden. And so why does this matter? Well, I'm here today because Jesus came to proclaim, what did he proclaim? Good news. The exact opposite of what humanity is craving for. Jesus comes to present the good news of the kingdom of God, and people still scurry and run in the opposite direction. But you're here today because you are either a believer in Jesus Christ, or, or you're seeking him, trying to draw a little closer. And our scripture today shows us, choose to line up behind Jesus, and your life immediately changes. Now, why that phrase, line up? Well, because when Jesus says to, to these fishermen, come follow me, the, the language there, the word that Jesus uses is the same word when Jesus is talking to Peter in the night that Peter, or rather in the night that Jesus is going to be betrayed. And he's kind of laying it out for the disciples and he tells the disciples, the disciples he's going to be arrested, he's going to be you know, tortured, he's going to be uh, crucified, he's going to be buried, he's going to... He's going to be risen again from the dead. And Peter's like, no, 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 no. I, you know, that doesn't sound like a good plan. And what does Jesus tell Peter? Get behind me, Satan. That, the, that word, come follow me and get behind me, that, that's the same word. I, either way, Jesus is calling Peter in that moment in the future, here at the lake, to line up right behind him, truly to follow him. And when you line up behind Jesus, your life immediately changes because there's a change in your belief, there's a change in your purpose, and there's a change in your priorities. And we see all of this right here in this moment of time. The most important transformation you can go through is this change of belief. So what do we see that happens here? Jesus proclaims in verse 14, And after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. So what is it that Jesus is proclaiming? Well, the first thing that he mentions is the time, the timing of the Father's plan. The time has come, he said. Sin and death have separated people from God long enough. You and I, we kind of wander around before we came to faith in Christ. And, and for people of the world, they, this time they're wandering further away from God. They no longer recognize him at work. They don't see how close he is. They don't see the goodness of the Father. Let's pause for a moment. Fast forward to today. Doesn't sound that much different, right? Than, than, than people that are, are walking around without the faith of Jesus. The, the time has come and, and fortunately is still present for faith in Christ. And that our message is really the same. The, the fact that the kingdom of God has come near. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, has walked this earth. He's paid the debt for sin on the cross so that you and I and anybody else who comes to faith can repent and believe. Change our minds about what we're seeing and doing and believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior. And when you believe in Jesus as your Savior, your Master, this change in your belief, it's, it's not just like a, a television show where there's like a renovation of a home or an alteration or a modification. Faith in Jesus is this knock it down, burn it to the ground, dig up the foundation, pour a new foundation, totally new construction because your sinful self is gone and you have become a new creation because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Line up behind Jesus, and your life immediately changes. Your sin is wiped clean. But it also highlights a change in your purpose of life. And again, drop that back down into the text in verse 16. It says, As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Now, let me give you a quick side note here. Uh, this is the newer translation of the NIV. Uh, the, the translators of the NIV have correctly stated uh, that they're going to fish for people because all of the underlying language that's there really points to the fact that it's, it's all of humanity that Jesus is talking about. 
They're, they're not just fisher for men. It's, it's all of us. Everybody has the opportunity to be saved. But this change in purpose that Jesus is presenting uh, kind of begs the question, who do you follow? I don't know if you wake up in the morning and ask yourself, who am I going to follow today? Uh, out on social media right now and other platforms, they are trying to get you and your family members to follow them any way that they can, presenting you with wonderful little videos or pictures, whatever it is to draw you in. That, that same invitation, follow me, click. It's that easy on social media. Uh, here's an amazing fact for you. The top five social media, I'll call them leaders, as of March 24th of this year, were Cristiano Ronaldo, who's a soccer star. I don't know if anybody's a fan of him. Uh, and then there were four singers or entertainers, Justin Bieber, uh, Ariana Grande, as she prefers to be known, uh, Selena Gomez, and Taylor Swift. Any fans? No, don't tell me that. <laughs> These five people, March of this year, ha have a following of combined together over two billion people. That, that means that two billion people are being led or influenced Wherever those top five want them to go. Toward God? Maybe? I don't know. I didn't do my homework here. I don't know what they're putting out there. Did, 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 are they asking us to follow them like towards something or someone or, or some cause? Maybe. To their personal gain? Probably. Two billion people. Billion. Lots of lot of people, my friends. Now, in comparison... Uh, there right now are about 815 million, 2 billion, 815 million, 815 million people who claim to be a born-again follower of Jesus Christ. Influence? Influence. Who do you follow? Do the people that you follow follow Jesus? So that we're all sort of pointing us, one another, in the same direction? Come, follow me. It's Jesus' call then, and it's Jesus' call to you and I today. And when we say yes, it changes the purposes completely of your life. So I want you to picture this moment of Jesus. Picture yourself maybe if you've been down to the Jersey Shore lately. That's kind of, you know, a good picture. Jesus is kind of walking the shoreline and and he kind of locks eyes on Simon and Andrew. And specifically, he's looking at them and he, he speaks those famous words, come follow me and I will send you out to fish for people. That, that's our purpose today, to make fellow followers of Jesus, to find those people who have this craving for something more out of this life. That, that moment in your life, you, you know it, when you gave your life over to Jesus, and you knew just your whole, your whole trajectory had changed. And so that's our purpose, to, to be, become fishers of people, to rescue those that are lost and don't know the path or don't know the way to heaven. You know it, and it's not a secret. Share it. Because otherwise, people continue to be lost on the trail, the path of life, whatever you want to call it, and they're headed to an eternity in hell separated from God Almighty. But you might be asking yourself this question, why would God use me? Uh, you might say to yourself, I'm not qualified enough, I'm not educated enough, I'm not old enough, I've not been walking with Jesus long enough. There's a whole string of things you could fill in there. But picture this in this moment. So Jesus, there he is, he's walking on the shoreline, he's locked eyes with these guys, he's calling them out. Jesus did not roll into town and call on some wise old guy sitting at the, you know, the, the town gate. He didn't call on the synagogue leaders. He didn't call a powerful politician, right? That's a good thing. He didn't call a mighty military man. He called fishermen. Those that worked the sea came home smelling like soggy old nets, fish slime, fish guts. Any fishermen in the room? Fish, they appear to be a dying breed. I'm getting like, there's like six at the balcony in Randolph. Anyway, for those of you that have volunteered to raise your hands, thank you. You know what I'm talking about here. <sighs> Fishing for these men back then was a terribly demanding job. 
They worked no matter how hot it was or how cold it was. Why? To provide for their families. Many times at night, we see that recorded for us in the Gospels. And here, Andrew, Peter, James, John, they lived this kind of life. And maybe, just maybe, Jesus chose fishermen not only to point them to a new catch, but because of their willingness to do hard work. I know many of you here today, you're hard workers. Maybe he called the fishermen because they're, they're okay with unknown results. Bzzz, Nothing. Bzzz, this is why I don't like fishing, by the way. That, that, that unknown part of it all. But, but, but waiting to get these great rewards. This is just the attitude that Jesus needs for people to receive this new purpose and to go out and to share the faith of Christ with other people. And so you, when you share your faith with, in Jesus with other people, it's a lot like fishing. Because sometimes it's hard to do. Like Satan sitting on your shoulder telling you all the reasons why you shouldn't share your faith with the person who's saying, hey, do you know how to get to heaven? Sometimes it's hard because you're, you're afraid. To, to, you may, am I going to say the right thing? Am I going to say the wrong thing? Like, just speak the words. Jesus is the way to heaven. And yet it also takes great patience because the results of that moment in time, they're unknown, sort of. Because the person, if, if you ask somebody, you know, can I share my faith in Christ with you, they're either going to say no um, or they're going to say yes. And you, you just have the opportunity to deal with either of those opportunities. And, and, and when you step into that, and if you've cast that net out, okay, do, would you like to hear about my faith in Jesus? And you hit that fish. Do they still say fish on? I don't know. Old term. You see the excitement of somebody coming to faith in Jesus Christ. Because you know, you might even be more excited than they are because you know how much their life has just changed. My friends, that's our purpose. Line up behind Jesus and your life immediately changes. But, so, so we've got this change in belief, we've got this change in purpose, but along with it comes a very big change in priorities. Read with me again in the text. At once, at once, they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired man and followed him. See, for these guys here, Jesus' calling is so irresistible. Their whole world has changed in this moment. That whatever was important to them at the moment, they literally cast away. Their, their priorities shifted, whatever, 180 degrees. Simon, again, better known as Peter, and Andrew, they, they left their nets. That, that's the detail that we had about them. They, they leave behind the tools that they need to catch fish and support their family. It's like a mechanic who's left his toolbox. All right, I'm going. Psst. Their priorities have changed. You get then to James and John, and when Jesus locks eyes on them, not only have they left their nets, but it gives us the detail that they've left their father as well. Now, why is that important? Well, for this period of time, the father in a Jewish home was the family's guardian, he was their, the, the business manager. Here he is in this particular situation. He's running his whole fishing business. He's got hired men and his son's out there. He's rocking and rolling here. But he's also the judge of the family to decide what we should do next, whether it should go forward, backwards, which way we should go, deciding whether something's good for the family or bad for the family. The, the father in the Jewish home, he would have been like the priest of the family, shepherding his whole family towards faith in God Almighty. And he owned everything. These men, these other two men, these guys jumping ship here, they're risking their future inheritance. Their change in priority. They are risking everything. Choosing to follow Jesus and choosing to make him known to other people. 
So two challenging questions for you today. How urgent is it for you in your life to follow Jesus? And number two, because the answer to the first one is your own. And the second question is, will you let the Holy Spirit change your priorities? We come to faith in Jesus. Hopefully, you've, you're here. You, hopefully, you, you start worshiping the Lord Almighty. You start studying his word. And this is an important way that we do it together. Maybe you're doing it at home. But have you submitted the priorities of your life to Jesus Christ? Have you asked the Holy Spirit deliberately to change my priorities? And that is a scary prayer. Uh, the, these guys here that Jesus is calling, they, they, they psh, immediately, they're gone. Whoop, up and out. Yes, we'll follow you. You had that moment in your life already if you're a believer. You said yes. You, your life has changed. But now take this next step, this bold prayer, and ask the Holy Spirit to change your priorities. Help me, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, fill me to the place where, Lord, uh, my wants and desires are yours. To be willing to lay down my life the same way you did for other people. Change your belief. Change in, in, in your purpose. Change in your priorities. When I've seen people, when they, when they share their testimony of faith with me, I, I've heard from people that, that their lives were radically changed because of this change in purpose. I've, heard, I've had people who have described themselves as thieves stop stealing. A and those that were self-proclaimed adulterers have stopped and become and chosen a life of faithfulness. Business people who have stopped cheating their customers and, and their vendors. And drug dealers who stopped dealing drugs. Gossips who recognized their sin and changed who and what they were talking about. And maybe, maybe, best of all, I've seen people that would say that they were rather judgmental in their life and their attitude and they've become filled with mercy and kindness for, for those that are around them that either do or don't know Jesus because we're all broken and we're all continuing to be healed. Faith in Jesus truly is being born again. Jesus tells that to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, to be born again. It's new. It, it, it's faith in Jesus. It's like starting over to be born again. It's life-changing. And no longer are you following yourself or your personal desires or your own priorities or even your own temptations anymore because you've been changed by the Holy Spirit and empowered to live with different priorities, the priority of the kingdom of God. So uh, are, you, are you even just checking in with Jesus every day? How's your prayer life, your conversations with the Lord? When you hear Jesus call, come follow me, are you ready to line up behind him? Because it really is a lot like playing hide and seek. Oh, not hide and seek. I don't play hide and seek. I want to play follow the leader. So here we are. So, so, so Jesus, we, we, we say yes, we want to believe in him. We want to stand behind him and we want to follow him. If he goes left, we want to go left. If he goes right, we want to go right. If he backs up a little bit, we're going to back up too because we don't want him to step on us. And if he goes forward, we want to go forward. And if he brings us to a place where maybe we're not comfortable, maybe we're not very confident in those moments, we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to change our priorities and step into those moments. Are you willing to allow the Holy Spirit to change your priorities? Are, are you ready to put your entire identity in being a follower of Jesus Christ? And then even like change everything about yourself. Like, like, who are you? I am a follower of Jesus Christ. 
and you're no longer defining your identity by your heritage or your politics or your sexuality or your economic position. Are you ready for that kind of change, my friends? Because if you've said yes to Jesus, that is your identity. You are a follower of Jesus Christ. Line up behind Jesus and your life immediately changes. Change of belief, change in purpose, and change in priorities of your life. And these things are true at whatever stage of life you find yourself right now in your faith of Jesus Christ. Uh, if, if you're not yet a believer, if you've not yet asked Jesus to be your Savior, today is your opportunity to do just that and, and line up behind Jesus. Lord Jesus, you could, you could simply say something as simple as, Lord Jesus, I know that I am far from you. I, I know that I am a sinner separated by my own choice and the way I was born and all of it. Lord, just save me. I, I know that you died on the cross for me. And I receive the gift of eternal life from you that you've promised. It's, it's as easy as that because he's done all the hard work. If you're, if you're a new believer, if you're new to salvation, then, then just know that you're gifted with eternal life. If you're a drifting believer, maybe, maybe you've spent a little too much time away from your Savior. There's no condemnation for those that have the faith of Christ. Ju just hear him when he says, come follow me. And whatever direction you're drifting on, change and line up behind him. And if you are a strong believer, you know, if you've been walking with Jesus for a long time in great victory, now there's no pride here. That's not what I'm indicating. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. If you feel like you've been walking with him strong and close, stay behind him so you don't lose your desire for mercy and keep fishing for other people. There's only one that will change the course of our world. And that is the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I said it before, you know this. It's not a secret. So be bold and share your faith. I'm going to ask if you would to allow me to just pray for us before we close out our time together this morning. Lord Jesus, we have uh, sung your praises this morning. We have studied your word, and we will ask right now that you continue to shape and change our hearts. We thank you for the gift of salvation, which has only come from the sacrifice that you made on the cross. Lord, give us boldness to continue to proclaim this to the world. And Lord, uh, for every wounded heart, that's in this room. I pray that your Holy Spirit would bring great and magnificent healing to your glory. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Uh, why don't you stand up for me? Uh, as you may know, uh, we kind of close each service with a call to prayer. So our prayer team is going to be down here in front. They are some great friendly people that would love to pray with you, and pray for you, whichever you need, uh, whether it be uh, introducing you to faith in Jesus Christ or celebrating with you that you've made that decision today or maybe a burden of life or, or something that you'd like the Lord to just work in to heal you of. Uh, be bold and come down front. Uh, Pray with one of my friends. They'd, like I said, love to talk to you. If you are here today and you are able-bodied, I'll let you define what that is, and you'd like to help us set up the back of the room for the, uh, the tables and chairs for the Sunday night service, uh, we'd love to have you back there. There will be some team members back there. If you could do that as well, that would be a great service to others. For us this morning, I'm going to offer this benediction. Go in peace. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a great week.